Alright, hello and welcome. This is going to be my guide on getting started with movement in Turnt. So, <clears throat> when you boot up the game, you will get a screen that's at least similar to this. I, as a disclaimer, I am on the alpha version, 0 .3 uh, so all content is subject to change. So some of this stuff might not look the same <clears throat> by the time you are seeing this or playing the game. So, to start off with, let's review options. You have four tabs here, player name, sensitivity, crosshair scale, crosshair color, standard HUD stuff. Uh, my sense is 2.5, 0.5 crosshair scale, other stuff like that. You can also choose whether or not you see other players when you're playing online. So next is video, pretty standard graphic settings. Audio, just master volume for now. Controls, now this is all going to be subject to your own uh, what you're personally used to. All of my controls so far are standard except for mouse 2 for jump and shift for crouch slide. Uh, that's about everything options wise as far as this version of the game goes. You can set these to whatever you want. Uh, <coughs> now to boot up a map at the time of playing the game servers are currently offline uh, so clicking play online won't actually do anything so by the time you're playing this they might have changed it so that if you're playing offline your leaderboard times will not be saved but by then hopefully they've implemented a way to uh, to play maps by yourself and still save your leaderboard times to the server so to boot up a map we are going to boot up uh, zeal recapture so we type map qmap underscore zeal underscore recapture now to boot up any map you just type map space then the map name this will load up the map for us and here we are so the main subject of this guide is going to be strafe jumping strafe jumping is the primary is the uh, is the primary way of gaining and preserving speed in turnt now, as the name implies, strafe jumping has two parts, the strafe and the jump. Now to start with jumping, you can either hold jump or uh, press it individually each time, but what's important is that every time you hit the ground, jump is being pressed uh, before and during your contact. So there, I'm just pressing and then holding jump slightly before I hit the ground so that when I hit the ground, jump is pressed and I jump again. You can also just hold it. You can do that. Uh, if you're used to normal defrag, you probably won't need to know anything that's going on in this video, but in normal defrag, Quake 3, Quake Live, Quake Champions, you should not hold the jump button because it will decrease your max speed. But in this game, it's fine. You can hold you can hold jump, you can press it individually, it doesn't matter. Now, that is the jump part. Jumping maintains all your momentum. The next part is the strafe. So, once you can maintain momentum, you have to build momentum. And that's where the strafe comes in. You may have noticed already that any time you change directions, you gain a little bit of speed. If you look at the speedometer in the middle of the screen, you see 365, then 400, 420, 365, yeah. Anytime you change directions, you gain speed. And this works in the air, too. Now, if you can build momentum while you're in the air, and you can preserve momentum by jumping repeatedly, you can pretty much indefinitely increase your momentum in a straight line by jumping and strafing. Like that. That is the basics of a strafe jump. You move, you jump, continue jumping and strafe to build momentum. Right there, I'm just holding W and A. You can also do it by just holding one key. Now, you can actually do this in any direction. Uh, like you can hold 
W, you can you can hold a variety of different keys. Uh, you can jump backwards as well. Uh, what matters is that you're changing directions in the air. Now, <clears throat> the important part is being able to continue this momentum in a straight line. And to do this, uh, you'll start your strafe jump, and then you'll switch the keys you're holding and flick your mouse over. And that will preserve your momentum while changing the direction you're moving in the air. And this will more or less lead you on a straight line so that you don't, you know, bump into walls and stuff just if, if you're just going in one direction. It's important that you be able to change directions quickly. Now, you can do this either with W and A or W and D. Like, for example, this is W, A, W, D strafing. Now, uh, you can also do it with A and D. There's changing directions with A and D. Now, an important part to figuring this out and building the uh, and building speed optimally is this big green bar in the middle of the screen. This is called the sea gas HUD or the camping gas HUD, and it's basically a visualization of the optimal crosshair placement to build speed as quickly as possible. So, for example, when I'm in the air, as long as my crosshair is in this green bar, I will be building speed no matter what. The closer I am to the right of the green bar, the faster I'll build speed. So for example, I build speed quickly there, but I build speed slowly here. And if you're outside the green bar, you don't, you don't build speed at all, you just slow down. So it's important that you optimize your strafes, no matter which keys you're uh, using to strafe. And remember, staying to the inside of the bar always build speed faster than the outside. Now, uh, those are the basics of strafe jumping. Another thing to cover is the circle jump. Now, when you start out, the primary way you're going to start your runs will probably be a circle jump until you get to the point where you can do uh, crouch sliding pre-strafes. Uh, so a circle jump is basically when you're grounded, you can increase your speed to a certain point. It's like 480 something. Yeah, around there. And the point is that you, you strafe until you hit 480, and then you jump. And this gives you a more instantaneous burst of speed than if you were to just uh, jump and then hold two keys. So you can build speed a little faster by circle jumping than if you just start jumping and then strafe. So those are pretty much the basics of strafe jumping. Some more things to cover about the dynamics of jumping and how it interacts with slopes. So if I were to uh, jump into the slope, I would lose a little bit of speed or it would slow down my acceleration. Like for example, I lost speed going down it. The reverse is also true where if I jump here, see, I got a little boost from jumping a little bit of extra distance and then springing off the bottom. You can use this in your runs at certain points. Uh, for example, you might come to a place where there's a small ledge and you want to boost yourself up over another obstacle. You can, you know, straight jump. And when you hit it, you can use that vertical height you gain and then jump up to get over whatever obstacle you need to go over uh, yeah uh, jumping downwards works the same you can instead for example in some places you might find that you have enough speed that you jump over a slope entirely but if you time it correctly you can hit the bottom of the slope while you're jumping and add a little bit of speed that way. Uh, you can find lots of small optimizations and tricks. For example, avoiding losing speed going up a slope by crouch sliding up it, or adding speed by timing a jump so that you hit the bottom of the slope and gain speed. Uh, there are lots of important little optimizations like that that you can make. 
So that is sort of the fundamental mechanics of moving and jumping in the game, strafe jumping, accelerating. The next video will be about crouch sliding, and that is a much more in-depth and interesting topic, especially if you're used to Quake 3D frag, and stay posted for that.